I would like to demonstrate to you how the OPC and source optimization can be used in an alternating fashion in order to optimize the printing of a particular pattern. In this case we have a 16 nanometer line end gap simulation that's going to be at EUV. We are going to use a rigorous Tempest with Fourier boundary condition mass technology and we are going to try to determine what the overlapping process window is here. So if you're given a pattern and someone asks you what is the overlapping process window, nowadays you really can't determine that without both optimizing the mask and optimizing the source. So that's what we're going to do here. If I just refresh the live view, I'm going to get um, something that doesn't print right. This line is semi-isolated so it's going to print too small. This gap is printing too big. It's printing at 42 and I've anchored here so this line is printing on target at 16 but the line ends I've pulled back the gap is too big and the this line is printing too small. So the first step would be to do a OPC correction in order to do that you need to be using the GDS multi-site pattern so we need to export this pattern as GDS luckily we have the ability to do that so you go gazillion export and you can pick the parameters here that's just how many repeats and things like that and so now you've got this in a GDS multi-site you could of course export this to GDS um, and if you had multiple patterns set up with variables, those would uh, propagate, you, you would be converting to GDS all of those patterns and you'd have them laid out in different places within this, uh, geom uh, within this pattern. So now, right click to zoom all, we've got this in GDS uh, multi-site and what we're going to do is perform an OPC so uh, you need to choose your you can see that our mask layer is our target layer at this point so our target layer is this blue uh, region and our mask layer is the same so we're starting off with our mask the same now this is again going to run a rigorous mask model and we don't have an aerial image so I mean a resist model so we're going to work from the aerial image so when you press the OPC button I'm not I'm going to skip over that but I'll just load the result it'll take a few minutes um, I'm running with SimRunner and uh, it takes a few minutes because it has to do several rigorous simulations of the mask but the result looks like this okay so after OPC we get this so that is our corrected mask pattern and if we refresh the live view on that it's going to take a few seconds because it needs to run the uh, rigorous mask on this again because I just loaded it so just as a point here, you can see I'm using SimRunner. And you can see that SimRunner I have connected to two HSS devices. So those are running the rigorous mask uh, right now live. It's about less than one second per cycle. So that's really not too bad for a, a rigorous 3D EUV mask simulation and now it's calculating the aerial image and so after OPC we have an improved image okay we have um, this is printing at 33 this is printing at almost 14 and uh, this is printing at 16.9 so after OPC we have a little bit better image um, 
again, we're using just an unoptimized source. So if we want to see what the process window we have is here, the GDS multi-site only lets us have one, one metrology point. So we're going to have to customize this. And then we can add our other metrology points here. So we can add one at the gap. Now I know these numbers already because I've written them down. So you'll see I'm, I'm manually adding the gap is going to be 32. We expect it to be bright and we'll have a 5% tolerance because our CD is, six, is um, 16 nanometers and this gap is 32. So we want 10% of 16 to be our tolerance, which is 5% of 32. And then we can add the other metrology point. But the bottom line is um, you add the other metrology point and then you can run the simulation and you can get a process window. And I, and I, I have that somewhere. Um, let me see if I can find that. And, okay, without any OPC, this is the process window you get. In other words, it doesn't even show the red and the blue process windows for the gap and the line because they don't print. Then, I believe this is... Um, this is OPC only process window here. And you see that there's no overlapping process window even after we do OPC. I mean, we probably could do a little more OPC and maybe get some tiny overlapping process window. But the bottom line is, is that with an annular source, it's just not going to print. Uh, you're going to have almost zero process window, if not zero process window. So the next step is to do a source optimization. So I'm going to go back to the point where we've done um, the OPC. Okay, so this is our corrected, this is after one iteration of OPC. Now, what we'll do is press the Optimize Source button. And that's going to bring up a dialog, and it's going to kind of ask you some parameters about how you want to do the optimization. We have two optimization algorithms. I'm not going to go into the details right now, but you press that button, you answer the questions, and in about five minutes, you end up with an optimized source. So I'll load that one. This is after um, source optimization. What it does is it, again, it takes about five minutes and it sets a, a source um, uh, intensity for you like this. You can't see it here. This one is just uh, the, the scale is wrong. Um, So this is your so this is your optimized source intensity. I just don't normalize it, so the scale is a little bit weird. So that's the source intensity that it calculates, and then on when you simulate that, again you go through the process of um, customizing it and adding back the other two metrology points, and then what you end up with is. Uh, a process window now. Now you've got the line, the gap, and the anchor features all printing at the same set of defocus and threshold levels. During the source optimization process we programmed in a plus and minus 30 nanometer defocus. So that means it says optimize this over plus and minus 30 nanometers focus. I think we've also uh, done this for 40 nanometers and we've got a slightly bigger uh, depth of focus as you'd expect. So this is the uh, 98 nanometers depth of focus. That's the width of this ellipse. And I believe this one at 30 is uh, so actually I think we can put these both on the same plot. If we say tile horizontally we can put them side by side. So this is plus minus 30 and this is uh, plus minus 40 in the focus and here we have 85 nanometers and here we have 98 nanometers depth of focus. Okay so to summarize 
you can take your pattern, you can export it to GDS, you can alternate between pressing the OPC button and pressing the source optimization button, and you can achieve a source optimization. This was done for a rigorous EUV mask. 